We are live from the Giant Bombcast Podcast, Giant Bomb Podcast Studio <laughs> in San Francisco, California. It's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tom. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, believe it or not, we haven't done one in, I, I checked the, the calendar, Beecham. Yeah. One month and three days. A month and three days. People are being thirsty. They were tweeting me like they were thirsty. They're like, yo, where's Apple Bite Extra Crunchy? Where are you guys at? What are you doing? Okay, let's explain ourselves. Steven, can you tell them where we have been like this whole time? We had Man, Christmas okay. break. We had Christmas break. So that's we, like a week and a half, we right? We opened gifts. We had a lot of fun. New Year's. Yes, then we, we had, had New, New Year's. Year's time. Then we went to Las Vegas to the CES Consumer Electronics Tronic Show. Show. And then after that, Brian Tong went home, and I went to Detroit. You were in Detroit for another week for another after week, that. another week, yes, at the auto show, which was really cool, actually. It was fun. So do that math. It's four weeks. We're <laughs> gone. We're here. We are back. We want to jump into the show and let you know it's been a month and probably the phone calls you left us a month ago probably aren't that they relevant. They might be outdated. They're a little outdated. So we want to start a clean slate and get you all back in on in the drill. You can call us at 1-800-616-2638. That's 1-800-616-2638. Uh, we put up the number somewhere. Uh, do we have the I graphic number? I don't have a graphic. Are you going to handwrite? Studio. Can you just handwrite it or something? <laughs> well, hopefully people listening will write it down or... Make a mental... Rewind. Rewind. Anyways, Rewind. give us a call. We want to hear your thoughts about maybe what you're hoping to see from Apple this year. Uh, we can kind of do a future telling episode. Let's just do that for next week. We're going to talk about the yeah. future of Apple next episode. We want to hear from you. What do you think? You can ask us questions about it. We'll talk all about it. But again, the number is 1-800-616-2638. Name, where you're from. Get right to it. 30 seconds or less, and we'll, um, we'll do this. So let's jump in the show. We're going to start off with some current stuff, some of the latest and greatest... We know about the MacBooks. We know during the break that Consumer Reports first didn't recommend them because their battery life was all over the place. Apple did a software fix that is still only available in beta right now. It's still not available to the public at the moment of this recording. So we still don't know exactly how that's going to affect everyday users. But look, I'm going to tell you why you should just wait for the new MacBooks in 2017. Cabby Lake processors, this is the new family of Intel processors that were announced basically at CES on January the 3rd. They're going to give you basically all the performance improvements that you wanted and were hoping for that you didn't get from the first generation. So we have the touch bar. We can The touch bar still, I think, is a lukewarm feature. Really? Everyone I talk to is like... Eh. kind of use it i don't really use it it's actually more annoying i don't like the personally i don't like the fact that there's no actual haptic feedback on it when you touch something you kind of want to know that it's registering a click especially if it's on a keyboard like your laptop yep. it still doesn't have that not every app is really using it the best way but some people love it because you can at least customize some of the quick actions that you jump to anyways the new macbook pros that are expected to come out this year 2017 most likely around the august september time frame We'll use Cabby Lake processors. Why do you want that? Cabby Lake brings you a 20% improvement in performance. It also uses less power consumption, which means more battery life. And the 15-inch model will support a 32 gig RAM option oh, wow. for pros. One of the kind of the big black eyes at pros were like, hey, not only did you take away our ports, this is just like a standard machine with the processing power that just isn't all that. Yeah, yeah. Hearing that uh, that complaint from a lot of people, that's just not as fast. I I implore you, if you were thinking about a MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar, just wait. I'm sure your current laptop will last you at least another year. I'm sure of that. Yeah, I mean, before this laptop even came out, you're telling everyone maybe wait for the second iteration. You kind of you say that with every product, almost, but almost, you know, yeah, because they always Apple always screws up the first one. <laughs> I was the first to buy the <laughs> iPad Pro. <laughs> I was the first. And then you got burned. I right. got burned three months later with their true tone display. I still, <laughs> I'm still going to beat. I'm going to do something about that, Apple. Anyways, um, MacBook Pros. I know Apple uh, loyalists are like, dude, why are you telling people not to buy? I, I You heard those three reasons. 20% better performance, better power, battery consumption, and 32 gig RAM support. So when when is this option going to come out? I'm guessing most likely in the fall. That's typically when they in do the their fall. laptop refresh. So it's, it's about, let's give it a seven seven months or so, seven, eight months. All right. Be patient, guys. You can live. First world, <laughs> hashtag first world problems, dude. <laughs> hashtag. Also, uh, Apple, we talked about the battery issues. 
that were plaguing them. Apple's fourth beta of Macos Sierra 10.12.3 has this new added feature that it warns you if your display brightness is higher than 75%, it actually shows you a warning. You can either choose to manually turn it down or, <coughs> excuse me, automatically have it turn down the brightness to save power. So they're basically telling you when your bright screen is too bright, it's going to be using more battery power than you'd like. I'm looking at my screen right now. I am easily over 75%. Is it warning you? Is it saying, no, Brian, turn it down? It's not because I don't have the beta, but I would say most people probably have the brightness of their screen over 75%. Always. I always do. Like, so. And then when you unplug it, you know, it'll turn itself down a little bit. Yeah. But then I'll just turn it back up. Exactly. Because I live dangerously <laughs> in my battery life. You're such a rebel, Stephen <laughs> Beecham. You're my, so crazy. On my PC, it does the same thing. I'm like, no, turn up. Tur turn up turn for up. what? Turn up. <laughs> turn up. All right, iPhone news, because you want, you want to hear the latest rumors. Uh, this is, again, you've probably heard a lot of this stuff, but we're just kind of catching you up to speed. Then we can start talking about other stuff. Uh, but the iPhone 8 could now potentially, according to a report, introduce facial recognition now this is the cool. first time we've heard of something like this but why would this be advantage advantageous Oops. we we know that apple acquired prime sense this was the company that was responsible for the connect camera on the xbox it had a depth sensor array of different cameras in there to be able to see the world around you that's actually really important for augmented reality yes. that's also one of the big initiatives that St tim cook cannot stop talking about like <laughs> i feel like he's said it at every recent interview like we yeah. like augmented reality. Yeah, we get it. Okay. Like, thanks for keeping things a secret. <laughs> thanks for making things exciting and cool, Tim. Like really, just awesome. tell us everything you're doing already. So that that is why that could be important. Again, we haven't seen any reports about this. It's a rumor. It may or may not be true. But what is pretty much been solid now, while the reports are aligning with the fact that we will see the standard 4.7 inch iPhone, we will see the standard 5.5 inch iPhone, right? So those will most likely be the 7S line of phones. But everyone is pointing to the fact that we will see a premium 5.8 inch OLED iPhone. Not only that, reports are saying that it will be roughly based or pretty much take design cues from the iPhone 4. That was my favorite iPhone of all time. We've talked about it in past episodes. I love the iPhone The metal 4. frame, yes. two pieces of glass, super sexy. Let's Let's take away the whole antenna gate stuff that happened with there. Let's pretend yeah. that didn't, that hadn't happened. That didn't right? happen. But the actual design is amazing. Some people are like, I don't like the fact that the glass shattered on the back. Well, guess what? How many times does your screen shatter anyways? Gorilla Glass has improved significantly. It's gone through maybe like two or three generations since then. They'll have to make some sort of shatterproof glass. They if they're going to go back it's... to that design. design <clears throat> back. There, I mean, the, the Samsung Galaxy uh, S7 did have some shatter problems if you dropped it but it was a sexy beast and let's be honest are you really are you iphone users out there not going to buy an iphone the next gen iphone just because it has a glass backing you're and, gonna buy it and how many people are cruising around with an iphone without a case i mean plenty you're crazy <laughs> if you're doing that i mean you know plenty of people are doing that i know that's that's living dangerously Steve <laughs> that's <Beecham>. very dangerously <laughs> So I'm all for this new design. Um, also, the fact that it would be enable with by getting rid of that aluminum backing, it would enable the phone to do wireless charging. One of the mm. in the year 2017, cool. Apple will bring wireless charging to the table. Thank you. Finally, <laughs> like four years later, finally, <laughs> it's either it might be four now. It, it sounds bad. Once what you, was the first phone that was? Charged oh wireless. It was a Hold on. Samsung I, phone. Actually, right? I believe it was the Palm Pre, Palm Pre was one of the very first phones that had wireless charging. You all can check me on that YouTube or Periscope, but I believe it was the Palm Pre. That and, was like And please five tell years us the year had, too, if you can in the chat room. Yeah, look it up online. We're we're talking. We can, we don't we don't have the resources or brain power to uh, keep up with that. So I'm excited about that and this new iPhone premium edition. We'll see what they call it. You know what we like to call it iPhone X. iPhone X or iPhone Future. Future. So Future. so it's gonna be like a very big iPhone four. Which I which I'm which not cool. I don't I which is cool, but I don't want a five point eight inch phone to be the premium I don't, phone. Neither do I. That is such a dog doo doo. It's gotta be smaller. Give me that design in a smaller form factor. We're just talking about based on the reports we've heard. We don't know any of this. No one really knows any of what is official until it's official. So again, we're just 
pontificating, but don't give me, don't make the premium phone a 5.8 inch one. Don't. That's stupid. <laughs> like that doesn't fit in my pants. Like my pocket literally can't support a 5.8 inch phone. My giant hands can't hold it properly. I've, I've, I have learned how to balance my phone though. My <laughs> iPhone six, cause it's too big. I can't get my hands around it. Damn. I'm like good at balancing it now, but you know. Good, lu- good luck with that. That's man. how we adapt. Good luck with that. All right, let's take a break because guess what? We've got a sponsor. Oh. And I've actually used this product. Whether you're a busy professional couple, a large family that runs at a breakneck pace, or someone who simply wants to start cooking more, check it out. Our friends at HelloFresh make it easier, tastier, and healthier than ever to enjoy the experience of cooking new recipes and eating together at home. This is really cool because you can go to their website. You have different options. You can choose like a veggie box. Nice. You can choose like a classic box, which is what I do because I need my meat. Like, how do you think I stay so swole? You need You're that so protein. I'm so swole. <laughs> you need that protein, son. Quin- Does it have quinoa? I'm sure they got quinoa. There, there, there's, in there quinoa there's quinoa up in that mix. Oh. Trust me. Um, there's all. They're also going to be launching a family box. Customers can order three, four, or five different meals per week, designed for either two or four people. That's now, pretty awesome because. There's a, I have a, not a lot of time to cook meals. Son. So if something healthy comes to my house and I could just throw it and four heat people. it up or something, boom. <clears throat> this is what's cool about it, right? Oh, yeah. It's a meal kit delivery service. So it comes in this box. We've heard of meal kit delivery services yes. before. So this is not new per se. But HelloFresh is, I will say, HelloFresh was pretty fresh. Like when <laughs> <laughs> they should just have, they hire me to actually do an advertisement. Yo man, that's fresh. That's some fresh stuff. That's, that's hella fresh. <laughs> hella fresh. Hella fresh. All right. So each meal approximately takes around 30 minutes to make. Uh, one of them took 45 minutes. I had a bundle that did. Okay. Check this out. It was like a basalmic chicken with like onions in it. Wow. It was like sweet, tangy. Like I was like, dude, that sounds good. With like an arugula salad. I did one of those. I did like a, it was like a a mustard, a sweet miso. It was like a mustard, like salmon. And then oh, I, I love my, oh, like a I love miso mustard mustardy salmon. salmon. Yeah. Yes. And then um, was the, the last one I had was an Italian meatloaf. And I like, I like ground it with my hands. Like I got into this. The man. three things you just named are three things that I would eat. And I would enjoy. These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> Anyways, 30 minutes roughly for each. But let's be honest. If you're someone like me, it takes like an hour to cook this because you're like chopping the onions and you're like crying. You're chopping the onions and you're crying. It <laughs> sucks. That sucks. But anyways, uh, I just want to let you all know, not only are they a sponsor of our show this week, but it is a dope service. The call to action. If you want to take advantage of this, we got a special offer for you. $35 off your first week wow. of deliveries. Visit HelloFresh.com and enter Apple when you subscribe. HelloFresh. Guess what? It's hella fresh. Mm. Oh, cool. cool. There cool, you cool. go. I just made a Thanks jingle so for. I just made a jingle you did. for. The, you made like two jingles during that. Good what, job. what was the? Other, oh, what did I say? I was. Or like, did you did, did like tagline? Hello yeah. fresh is hello fresh. <laughs> <laughs> hello fresh is hello. Fresh. Damn, that's fresh. <laughs> all right, getting on along to the rest of the stories in our rundown because really that's all you guys and gals care about. AirPods. There was a story earlier this week that claimed, uh, according to Slice Intelligence, that was more towards like the end of last week that the AirPods had made this huge gain in market share. Slice Intelligence is an analytics website that takes receipts of all online sales and then breaks them down. Now, according to the original Slice report, the AirPods in just arguably two or three weeks in the entire month of December versus the entire year for all headphone manufacturers, based on that first report, they said that they took up 26% of all online sales of wireless headphones okay wow. think about that they were on sale for three weeks versus other companies like sony and lg and sennheiser uh yeah. they even topped beats which are at 15.4 percent and then bose came in at 16.1 percent. this is for online sales only but and then but then i know beach you're like damn that's crazy <laughs> like wow yeah but then npd data was like <clears throat> well actually we take the receipts of both brick and mortar stores and online sales. How what percentage do you think AirPods came in at once NPD decided to step in and be like, hey guys, here's a little reality check. Oh man, that's a tough one. Like just, uh, just throw out a number. Fifteen percent, maybe. Mm, you you could you could try maybe try a little lower than that. I'm gonna ten percent. Uh you could go even lower <laughs> than that. How about two percent market 2%, share? Two percent, wow. Two percent market share. Now that's 
obviously significantly lower than the 25% number that or 26% number that was thrown around initially. Again, this is brick and mortar and online sales, but let's put this in perspective. Again, they were on sale arguably for, I'm going to be generous and say two and a half weeks. And okay. that was like not even before Christmas. Not right? yeah, it was like rose right before the end like of the year. Like a day before. It was like Christmas right before the end of the year. <laughs> but then if you look at other manufacturers or other competitors, uh, you have someone like Bose, who through the course of the year made up eight percent. You know Plantronics. You know Jaybird. They uh, for the year sold two percent. So that's actually pretty incredible that the AirPods in just that small amount of time that is was cool. able to match based on MPDs data two established brands that have been selling headphones for the entire year. Yeah, it makes sense because, you know, when you buy headphones, you're not really in the market for another pair of headphones anytime soon. So, and also AirPods were so new and a high, very high profile product. Yeah. So that makes sense. And I did see a lot of them at CES <clears throat> and I saw them at Detroit and I didn't hate them. I was like, oh, cool. yeah, you're kind of like, you kind of get over it. You're like, wish eh. I could afford them. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Beats had a 25% uh, unit sale share. Again, Apple at 2%, Bose at 8%, LG had 10%, Sony at 7%, and then, like I said, Plantronics and Jaybird went around 2%, where Apple is now neck and neck with them. But it's kind of an interesting thing of how much momentum they've been able to gain. And let's just be honest, that is the power of the freaking Apple brand. Totally. There is no, like, really, wireless hair, earbuds, headphones have been around for quite some time. And even talking to some of my coworkers, they're like, oh, yeah. I've never had wireless headphones. They almost introduced the idea of wireless earbuds thanks to Apple just talking about them. So again, the power of the brand. In other new products coming out, what about that Apple Pencil? A shaky, sketch, sketchy, get it? Sketchy rumor. Hey. Pencil, pencil, sketchy. You see what I did there? <laughs> did I really have to call that out? It's pretty good. Good it's job, pretty... Brian. <laughs> thanks. Loser. Sketchy supply chain rumor claims Apple Pencil 2 will be launching alongside new iPad Pro models this year. A recent report also pegged that iPad Pro models are going to get delayed a little bit and come out sometime in the mid, the second half of 2017. We were expecting them maybe around a March-April time frame. They typically bring them up in the first kind of quarter of, of the year, but that doesn't appear to be the case. The iPad Pro also, for this coming year, is expected to have a 12.9-inch, my big boy, my big Bertha. Nice. Uh, 9.7 inch will be the entry level model, and then a uh, rumored 10.5 inch with thinner bezels on the side. Cool. I'm cool. like, okay, that's fine. Everyone watches like, dude, I got my iPad. I'm good. I don't even need a new one. I know. Still like, rocking really. the third generation. So here's the thing about the Apple Pencil 2 uh, that they're talking about. There's been a variety of patents and new features. For example, one of them was this smart cover integration where the smart cover could be like a drawing pad. Another one was using Tim Cook's, like we've already been testing the Apple Pencil for use on the iPhone. Oh. That makes me sad. Yeah, why would you do that? Not only it's why would like you do that. bigger than the phone almost. If you all look up online, <laughs> there's a classic moment of Steve Jobs. If you just look up Steve Jobs' stylus, ah, where he talks about, he's like, nobody it. wants a stylus. You got to <clears> put it in, you lose it. Yuck. But this isn't a stylus, it's a pen. It's an Apple pen. Soul. You're right. Apple pen. <laughs> so uh, they also have a pen for using the Apple Pencil or a, a stylus type device on a MacBook trackpad mm. to then use with your Mac. Sorry, not a MacBook trackpad, a Mac trackpad. So they've been playing around with all these different ideas. Who knows if that's what the Apple Pencil 2 will support. To me, it's like you're just open up a can of worms. You've got to come up with more inter like more UI, more OS functionality to all of a sudden integrate a pencil slash stylus into all of your products. It seems a little silly that yeah. Apple would do that. <laughs> but again, this is not the Apple we know. It's not the Apple we know. It's a totally new Apple. What do you think about that whole idea though? I, th I think it's it's silly. I mean, no one's it, the pen is gonna be longer than the phone, first of all. <laughs> so that's gonna be kind of funny. Where are you going to keep the pen, you know? But don't you think they'd make a stuff. custom one for the phone? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? That's hella Who funny. Knows? I could tell him. The funny thing about it is people would still buy it. Oh, for sure. You'd see how have that. You see how the people would like, hey, I got my cool long pencil with my phone. I'll and... see someone writing on it in the bus and I'll just look at them and glare at them. You just look at them with judgy eyes? Yeah. Why are you yeah, but so I, judgy? I saw a funny tweet this morning and it said like Apple's, Apple's uh, sales plan for 2017 is all... Jet black iPhone, jet black Apple Pencil, a jet black <laughs> MacBook, you know, it's all jet black, it's, everything. It's not going to be, so, it's probably we'll not see. that far from the truth. Yeah. 
Um, Apple, though, trying to reinvent themselves and do different things, I think, based on what we've seen, let me just throw this out here as a talking point. Yes. You and I were both at CES. Mm -hmm. The things that you saw at CES, to, for me, I felt like Apple isn't in and is in none Nothing. of the yeah. hot categories that were at CES. Yes. They're nowhere to be found in any of the hot categories that were CES. CES. I'm not saying CES is the end all be all, but things like the smart home. Like yes, yes Everywhere. Apple Apple has a smart home product, but nothing on nothing on the level of the Amazon Echo. Let's just True. throw that yep. out there. Yep. Um virtual reality, we didn't see much, we don't, you know. Yeah, virtual reality that's is like space a, is still figuring itself out. Yeah, it's still figuring um, it out. Um what else what else? Like obviously autonomous cars. That autonomous product. cars were everywhere. Everywhere. There was robots everywhere. Robot assistants. A lot of the only thing that we really talked about that was Apple related was Siri at CES, you know, to be able to control things, control your home and stuff. But that's that's about it. And that's not really like a physical product, you know. Yeah, I I just found it interesting that a lot of the hot things that I was excited about, especially the smart home integration, you know, Apple just doesn't have a product and I've said this even two years ago when the Echo came out. That was a product that has created a new platform, a new market, yeah. a new ecosystem. And that's what Apple used to do. Alexa was in everything. It's in cars. It was it's in, in every, cars. Every other speaker, refrigerators. It was yeah. everywhere. It was, it's it's the new it's the new tech platform. It's crazy. It's the new tech platform. And you know, just a little perspective. It was surprising because I thought that Google Home would have a chance to really catch up to Alexa. And at CES it really made the gap of partnerships and third party um, relations that at oh, Google has just the gap, the gap used to be like, Oh here it's like here now it's yeah, yeah. like, it's huge. So Google's even behind. Yeah. So, so Google may be smarter from a um, algorithm and understanding standpoint, but Alexa is more than good enough, but also has all this third party integration. Like I just got a harmony hub that I'm going to just be like, turn on Netflix and it's going to be able to do like, turn on your TV, your receiver, See, I need turn that. the lights off. I need that. I'm like, oh. I need like... Uh, but I'm going to call it Netflix and chill. <laughs> Alexa, Netflix and chill. I need it for my kids where I just come home and say, turn on Paw Patrol and they'll just start playing Paw Patrol <laughs> from Amazon Prime or something. <laughs> that would be cool. Then, my, then, that, then my, that would empower my kids just to start turning crap on, movies and stuff. So I want to throw this out. <clears throat> Apple is trying to figure out new ways to do things one of them is with content. We've talked about the past that they did fail for a TV streaming service. We've also talked about how they've lined up uh, two shows. One is uh, they basically have the rights to carpool karaoke without James Gordon, um, but they'll be doing their own version on uh, their Apple Music service, which I it's there's not going to be as cool. It's just not going to be as cool. It just it's won't. not going to have the same magic unless you combine two music artists together of mm. different genres. That could be cool. The could. problem is that artists don't necessarily, because artists are artists, they don't necessarily get along, <laughs> right? Yeah. And they don't want to sing another artist. So, like, you have it's to true. have, Corden is like a neutral party. Yeah. You know, and he's also different. not afraid to like make an idiot of yeah, himself. Yeah, exactly. Just have fun rock with stars it. are trying to be cool. Exactly. Time. So you're right. It's just not going to be, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be weird. The other one was Dr. Dre's uh, biopic, uh, Vital Signs, which reportedly had an orgy in it. Oh. So actually, maybe Stephen might. Do a trial subscription of Apple Music. <laughs> Do you have Apple Music? I forgot. I I, I tried it in the beginning and then I yeah. got rid of it. It was good. It was it. good. Not great. Nothing no, like yeah. I'm like I gotta have this. No. no. So check this out. Apple has been talking with Hollywood executives, and we know this, but they're trying to post new original content in the form of not only those two series we talked about, but TV shows and movies that they claim would be on the same quality level as. <laughs> Westworld and Stranger Things. It's like, yeah, let's throw like the two hottest shows out there and just yeah. say our stuff's gonna be like that. Yeah, yeah, everyone. you know, that's kind of uh, seems silly to do something like that. You know, well, this could be even sillier. Beach, they they want to create this new content that's TV show and movie related, but they don't want to put it on like their Apple TV app or anything. They want to put it on the Apple Music app. What? They want to put you behind Apple Music to watch their exclusive programming. I don't understand it, that. Why? Well, why would they do that? So that's your your first <laughs> in gut instinct is exactly why? right. Like, um, so it's Apple Music. There's right? Apple TV. I have the Apple TV app on my phone, so that makes sense that I would go there to watch Apple TV 
productions. Yeah, one, one again, one way of thinking of this is they're trying to boost their spot of their subscription service. Why? Right? Come on. Hey, pay 10 bucks. Not only do you get Apple Music, you get these great shows. I'm like, I'm sorry, there are tons of gr- other great shows everywhere else. Like, so okay, so they're gonna bu- bundle this together. They want to put Music some of this exclusive and, programming, or they're old. gonna nitpick and like pick and choose not, just not, certain things. No, not even certain. They, from what all reports are saying and what Apple is talking, is that they want these TV shows and movies to only appear on the Apple Music service. Which, if the shows Insane. are good enough and buzzworthy, they would hope that you people like you and me would then subscribe to Apple Music. And they don't at the moment. They're not planning to change the name of it either. It's, it's a mistake. They're trying to it's make it mistake. like a little bit of everything. So yeah. I have a solution for them. I talked about it in last week's show. Look, Apple, all you really have to do is buy Netflix, let, <laughs> Netf- let Netflix do what they do, yes. incorporate their programming into the Apple TV, or just leave the Netflix app the way it is, and post, put your shows on Netflix because that's where people are going to watch them. Yeah. Like... Don't overthink this, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what? Don't well, let Netflix be Netflix. Just buy them and put your shows on there. Or you are sitting on two hundred billion dollars. I know of I, cash. Or they could be like Netflix and what Netflix is doing. And all like t- TV mo- movie studio directors and actors are like, oh my god, Netflix is just throwing out cash right now. Yeah, like they're giving directors like, we want you to make an awesome show. We're not going to get in your way. Yep. We're just going to give you this big chunk of money. You go do whatever you want to do, right? And we're not going to get in your way. Make it as screwed up, dark, <laughs> violent, whatever you yep. want, you know? And and all these movie directors and actors are like, oh, this is great. I'm going to Netflix. Yep. You know, even like Chris Rock got like $40 million to do like two comedy specials or something, right? So look at people who didn't have a platform on mainstream TV like yes. Aziz Ansari. Yes. Perfect example. And And... All these actors and directors want to go to Netflix because they know that the culture there is is that where they're going to get complete backing, complete like do whatever you want. You know, and Apple's like, we're going to do carpool karaoke and they're already trying to put like, uh, they're already trying to put barriers around all their shows and like, they're already trying to make, you know, put everything in a slot and yep. then and then put it on a platform where it doesn't even make sense. So. Look, They're already shooting if I recall, I can't. Re- I'm someone's gonna have to correct me on this because I used to have the number. Uh, Netflix invested something like uh, somewhere around like a billion dollars in content sure. for last year, yeah. and I think they were gonna bump that up. I don't want to say two, but I feel like it might be like one and a half. Definitely more than a billion more this year and for 2017. They're smart. And they're they are just giving us what is it that we want? Content. Content okay. is king. And so no matter what Apple tries to do. You're not going to tell me... Netflix has a deal with Disney. Civil War and Zootopia and Jungle Book are on Netflix right now. Bro. Zootopia is rad. I like that movie. <laughs> bro, you need, you need to get on Netflix already now. I'm going to slap you in the head. I, 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 I borrow a friend's account now. I just watched Spies Like Us. On <laughs> wait, wait, with Chevy Chase? Which is the with best. Chase and Dude, Dan go wa- yeah. Oh my God, go that watch movie that. is so good. Right, like, right now so we're good. in like this Cold War era. You got to go watch that movie because it's so amazing. funny. And it's on Netflix. You know, Kids, if you don't know what we're talking about, trust us. <laughs> Spies Like Us. It, it might age best. us a little. Oh, it's one of the one of the it's best. one of the funniest oh movies ever. God. That's when comedy was comedy. up. It still holds up. That type of comedy holds up for sure. Anyways, again, Apple trying to get in the business of content. It doesn't excite me because they already want to put it behind their Apple Music paywall. And I'm sorry it took us that long to get to that point. But yeah. it's, you know, there's nothing exciting about putting it be- they, behind Apple Music. They got to hire someone who's willing to just let actors and directors do what they want and make this awesome stuff. Then they'll be winning Emmys like Amazon and Netflix are. They're, they're winning Golden Globe Awards. Like, you know? Amazon is doing, like Netflix is going bonkers, right? Amazon has carved a nice little niche and Amazon's they have got award winning cool they've got some cool stuff. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. But let's just that the whole dynamic between Netflix and Amazon shows you how tough it really is that Amazon, a company that bundles their programming with an Amazon Prime service, right? Yeah. It's not like they're getting thirty top tier shows. They're being very selective, picking and choosing, and they do have some great shows, but if you match up Amazon shows compared to Netflix, I mean, come on. Where are you going to go? Like, if you had to pick one or the other, where are you going to go? Yeah, yeah. You already know the answer to that. 
Hulu. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Apple Music is, is the correct answer. Apple Music. <laughs> Apple Music is the correct answer for carpool karaoke answer. and vital signs. Yes. And this at this day and age. In the Dr. Dre show. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> just buy Netflix already. Just just do it. Yeah. This is the best advice you could ever get. <laughs> All right, you know, um, so we wanted to, we're going to wrap things up here. But again, we just want to let you know, call us, be a part of the show. Let's talk about what you expect from Apple in the future. But more than anything, are you excited about the future of Apple? I think that we've gotten to the point where we need to ask this question and talk about it. A couple of years ago, I said, has Apple lost their magic? Everyone was pissed at me. No. You know, it's a conversation you want to have to, and I'm not trying to talk down on that one. Just let's be real here. So, um, let's hear what you guys have to say, guys and gals. I'd love to hear that. Call us 1-800-616-2638. Thanks again to our friends at HelloFresh for sponsoring us. We're going to wrap things up. Um, and again, we'll see you next week. Next week, man. Next week, baby. All right. We'll be back. Thursdays, actually. Thursdays. We're going to switch to Thursdays, guys. Yeah, for now, until we switch another day. Because uh, Fridays aren't working are right not- now. They're not, not working easy. right now. Yeah, they're not, in this studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thursdays, two o'clock p.m. PST Pacific time, and on, you'll find us on YouTube live stream and Periscope, and Periscope, and possibly some other places in the future. But oh, we're working on that. Working. Beachum's <laughs> yeah. always working. All right, that's the Beach and Tong show for this week. We'll see you guys. Take care. Be safe. Peace. All right.